Hey, hey, this is John Hollis. Love and Talk Radio. Want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and being a part of Rockers and Recovery today. Uh, just so you understand what we do here, Rockers and Recovery Media is dedicated to carrying a message of addiction recovery through music, news, events, and festivals taking place within and not limited to the clean and sober communities. Uh, we welcome uh, the several treatment programs and their patients from around the United States that are tuning in today. You know, one thing I've learned over the years, it's going to get better in a little while, and recovery isn't a death sentence. It's a whole new life. I'm John Hollis, host of Rockers and Recovery Radio, and today we have singer, songwriter, and musician Bobby Whitlock, who's going to be talking to us about music and recovery. And uh, Bobby... Welcome to the show. Hello. Yeah, thanks very One, much. Thanks for inviting me. You know, I, 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 if I've been reading up on you, and it's amazing, uh, your career, uh, your music career. And I think that uh, the message that you have for the recovery aspect of it, especially coming out of the years of rock and roll, and those years of rock and roll was all about, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, correct? Well, uh, I think that's uh, probably wrong because when you start doing a lot of drugs, um, the sex goes, so does the rock and roll, you know? <laughs> I, I think that was just some kind of a statement somebody said, and it sounded cool. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I've been clean for a long time now, it's, uh, since 2000, October the 13th, 2000. I just had enough of it all, you know, and, uh, uh, but I believe, I know it's a, uh, an ongoing uh, thing that you have to deal with, but it's life change well, for me. I, I, I just, I, I just got, I absolutely was sick and tired of everything. And so I, 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 I had a pharmaceutical thing going that went, started out with some doctors about a ringing in my ear. And uh, I wasn't drinking no hard liquor or anything at the time. I was just you know, drinking some wine and some a few beers here and there. But I had this ringing in my ear. And uh went to the doctor. He gave me something for TMJ. They started doing that. And then there was some kind of muscle relaxers. And, all this, uh, that, and then that created some other kind of noises and some other kind of nonsense. And they're mixing some of that flexoril and some of that other nonsense that they were giving me. And that caused something else that sent me to another doctor uh, who treated me for some other symptoms or something. And I became, uh, well, my dad uh, was a, a pharmaceutical junkie, and I only uh, came to terms and dealt with that in the past year and a half. My mom and I were just talking. and Because uh, I, had, I had three uh, uh, rounds with dealing with pharmaceuticals, and they seemed to all last nine years. But uh, my mom and I were talking uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, about my dad, and he was a squirrely little Southern Baptist preacher who was just, I was ducking, every, you know, most of my life for anything that might come my way that was uh, being thrown by him. He was as squirrely as he come, but um, could never figure it out, and uh, I never, I quit trying, and, you know, of course, figuring this thing, I had to be, uh, couldn't carry all that around, so when I was about 30 and had kids of my own, I, I don't understand. It must have been pretty hard, you know, growing up uh, and, and having kids and trying to be a minister and live right and everything and set a good example. It was uh, one of these deals that uh, he was doing the best he could with what he had to work with. He was from punk in the center of Mississippi, you know, and his daddy was a moonshiner. Uh, so, I mean, he came up uh, hard and it, it seemed to uh, warm that uh, for us. But I was talking to my mom the other day and well, about a year and a half or so, and uh, ago, and and it was, and it had to do directly with with my dad and his pharmaceuticals. And I told her, I said, I'm, I hadn't had an, even an aspirin uh, uh, since you know October of 2000, and uh, so when I quit doing that, I quit everything. Well, it was my life was, was coming completely unraveled, and, and I, I mean, I had to stop doing what was I was doing. And every time I would take one of those uh, uh, pills or have a drink of wine or something, uh, every time I was wishing that that was not, I never had any of it, never got on that roller coaster. And I decided just to cold turkey it. And that I did. And uh, uh, nearly killed me. 
But it was enough for me to say, all right, that's it. You know, because ever since I was a young boy, I, every time I did something, I was wishing I'd never done it in the first place. And I'm sure that everybody out there who's listening has, a, has had the same feelings about, you know, smoking cigarettes. Jesus, I can't. The thing is with this dang alcohol and, and pharmaceuticals and, and tobacco is that I can, and all the other damn hard drugs and cocaine and heroin and then morphine and everything, Forget about it. The uh, thing is, I can't believe that I ever did that to my body. This is the only thing that I that I have that really is mine, and uh, it, it gets me around and, and uh, pretty pretty dang good. I might I might say, considering all the uh, um, hard knocks it's had. But you know, it's, uh, when my mom said, uh, "Well, he was doing those. Uh, he had a, 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 a medicine." Uh, a zip up medicine bag, you know, a shaving kit, and it didn't have any razor blades in it. It was full of pills, no no bottles, just pills. And I remember that from when I was a boy. I just thought it, it was his medicine, you know. But now this man was getting a square, and he was a closet drinker. So he was taking pharmaceuticals before I was born, Mama said. And so she said, Oh, he had 26 books right next to the bed. She said, I counted them one time 26 books. And he'd get in bed and take a couple of those pills. He'd be taking something in the morning and taking something in the middle of the day and taking something at night. Um, and she said, and he, he read all those books and he would read and read and read and read and read. She's like, it made me crazy. Well, nobody was going to talk about the preacher being a junkie, you know, a pharmaceutical junkie. And I, and I said to her, I said, well, he was a, a junkie then. Because, I, I mean, that's what I had uh, uh uh, called myself as a pharmaceutical junkie. Uh, I, I couldn't get off of those damn things, you know. Well, number one, they said it would kill me if it come off. I'd come off of them. Well, as soon as she told me that about him, it was like I had a light bulb moment. I went, wow, no wonder, no wonder. And everything is just like discovering I'm black, you know, uh, about six months ago that, that my great-grandma Harrison was a black woman. Her parents were both black. This was my grandfather, Peepaw King's uh mother uh, was uh, a black woman and but they never said that you see then no one ever said anything about that in the family so i mean but when i found out that um, i and i remember grandma harrison being she had white features but she was black as she could be but i remember that and, and suddenly my life was clear you know <laughs> i was clear about so you, everything wow you definitely, i was like i had an you awakening you know yeah, you definitely found out, you know, a lot of things that you didn't understand that kind of, you know, put the pieces together over the years. It did, and then then it makes it like, you know, while well, life is, 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 is this has all been a part of my journey, you know, that doesn't mean I have to go repeat it, you know. Uh, mm. I've been burned plenty, uh, and I'm ready for uh, the next step, you know. So, I mean, I'm, um, I feel like I'm blessed to, to have had, Awakening and the understanding to know what this, uh, what I was doing to my body, and I just decided to heck with it, man. I said if it's gonna kill me, they, these doctors say this shit's gonna kill me to come off it. I was, I was wasn't alive, I wasn't living then. You know that was no life for me, and I said I would rather die than if it did. If that's what's gonna happen, if I quit everything at once. And I was taking some upwards of eight different pharmaceutical things, some psycho drugs and all this nonsense, and veins, and uh, Jesus, I, I can't even, I can go to heart medicine, first one damn thing and the next. Uh, I didn't need any of it. Uh, I quit it all. I nearly did die. And, uh, but uh, I just took it one, that one day at a time. That's too damn long. Uh, I, I just go one moment at a time, and I've been doing it one moment in a heartbeat at a time. And I don't think about alcohol and drugs. I'm too busy with living, you know. Um, and I, 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 I'm, I don't feel like I'm in constant recovery. Now, this may be con con contradictory to what you say, but I feel like I've recovered. I mean, if I hadn't, I hadn't had anything in all these, I don't even count the years. And Coco has to remind me. She said you had your your uh, birthday was uh, your sobriety birthday was week before last. So I'm like, I'll be there. But uh, I, I I do believe that at some point along the line you got to recover. You know, feel like okay, that's something that's behind me. That was 
that was part of my life. That was like, you know, smoking in the boys' room when I was a, a well, kid, you know. Or you know, it's, it's funny because there's a lot of shit, you know. Bobby, there's a lot of people that believe that, and I'm I'm one of them also. That you know, there was a point where you know, we do uh, we do recover and we move forward. One of the things I wanted to ask you about, you know, we talking about the the recovery aspect of it. Now going into the music part of it, um, you have done a lot of work. Uh, you uh, were one of the founding members of Derek and the Dominoes, and yeah, you were very, also a writer. Yeah, and you were also a writer, uh, along with Eric Clapton, in regards to uh, Derek and the Dominoes. Did you find that that was a rewarding thing in years later, looking back and seeing what, I mean, it's considered one of the best, uh, uh, one of the best uh, bands and albums that was ever produced, the uh, assorted love songs. So do you yeah. feel that, that that's something that to be proud of and you've been able to carry through into your recovery? I've carried everything I've ever done in, in, into my, my recovery. Um, I'm I'm proud of everything that I've done, uh, and that's just one of them, you know, because there, there's all things must pass, exile on Main Street. I mean, and then my four solo records, and I'm getting ready to start. As a matter of fact, um, um, and I wouldn't have been able to do this if I'd have still been using. I'd probably have been dead, you know. But uh, um, November the seventh, we're, we're going. I'm going in the studio in El Paso with the great Rob Faboni uh, producing me, wow. and um, uh, we're going to do an, uh, my so, another solo record on uh, on me. Uh, and I hadn't done that. Uh, and <laughs> yesterday, I was I was talking to Coco, and I said I haven't I haven't done a solo record really, been produced by anybody uh, since Jimmy Miller produced my second. <laughs> my second solo record, really, and I haven't had a, like a producer. I've always had my hand in the in the thing, you know. I've always been the co-producer or produced it myself or something like that. This is the first time I ever really let go of the reins and let somebody else go with it. And oh man, it's great. We got Charlie Drayden's going to play drums, and um, uh, Daryl Jones, uh, Stone's bass player, is going to play bass. Uh, me and uh, um, Stephen uh, Barber, who's from here, is a keyboard player. Coco, of course. Uh, myself, um, uh, Nick Trimless is going to play guitar. We're probably going to have some guest artists on as well. But right now, that's the core band. Quite exciting, you know. And, of course, Rob Faboni uh, produced uh, Joe Cocker, You Are So Beautiful, John Lennon. Um, uh, he, actually, he, he did the Eric Clapton <laughs> uh, 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 record, uh, you know, Shangri-La. And he built mm-hmm. that studio, as a matter of fact. And uh, he's uh, like a world renowned. He produced John Lennon, so I, and, and Dylan, you know Bob Dylan. So I, I'm in I'm, I'm in good hands, you know. I'm, I'm, uh, it's the first time I've ever really uh, been able to like turn loose and, and let go of everything. Speaking of letting go, that's the that was the key to um, my uh, uh, sobriety and getting off drugs and everything was. Uh, I had I've been try, every time something would, would go right in my life I would say okay this is happening now let me do this you know but I wasn't in the in the stream or flow of life you know I, I, the universe was not operating uh, uh, effectively uh, through me and for me you know uh, and as me I was getting in the way of everything you know little Bobby was you know yeah um, Bobby we're, but we're coming I, towards I, the end we're coming towards the end of the segment. Um, and yeah. what I wanted to be, what I wanted to be able to do, is in the future bring you back on so we can talk more. But most importantly, I want to let people know where they can find you. You can go to uh, Bobby Whitlock and Coco Carmel at doc, uh, at dot com, correct? And yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby you can also Coco find Carmel. Bobby Whit. You can find Bobby Whitlock on Facebook. And uh, again. I want to thank you, Bobby, for being a part of the show today. It was uh, awesome. Yeah. It wasn't long enough. Next time we'll make it longer. Um, and I definitely, definitely want to hear more about what you've done with your life and the people that you've worked with. And I think uh, our, our, client, uh, you know, our clients, our, our, our listeners definitely need to hear what you're saying and the message that you're carrying. I want to, again, thank well, you for I'm, being I'm, on the I'm show. I'm happy, happy to have been a part of it. And I didn't mean to ramble on, but you that's, know, that's okay. the way it goes. Listen. You it know, was really, and, really uh, good. I got something um, to say, it, and, I, and I hope that it was the, 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 poignant, the poignant matter. And uh, good luck to everybody. Thank you very much, John. Hey, Bobby, good luck. 
and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We will talk to you soon. The holidays start here at Kroger with a variety of options to celebrate traditions old and new. You could do a classic herb roasted turkey or spice it up and make turkey tacos. Serve up a go-to shrimp cocktail or use Simple Truth wild caught shrimp for your first Cajun risotto. Make creamy mac and cheese or a spinach artichoke fondue from our selection of Murray's cheese. No matter how you shop, Kroger has all the freshest ingredients to embrace all your holiday traditions. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.